Hi, Chris. How are you? Hey, good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for uh, wanting to do this. No problem. Uh, thanks for reaching out. Yeah. So I could start with the beginning and uh, just ask, um, what's your uh, background and did you always want to professionally pursue acting? Yeah, sure. So my background is I've done, I've been doing uh, the acting thing for like, since I was seven. And then I was like doing baseball and like riding horses. And then I was like, no, 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 no. I want to do, I want to keep pursuing this acting thing. So I went through school and then I decided to study in uh, university. So I received my BFA in acting from the University of Connecticut in 2020 and then graduated into a pandemic, <laughs> which was really scary. And the cool thing was um, I was able, like voiceover specifically has been something that I'm all, I was always like in the background, like to saying to myself, like, okay, I wanna like do more of this. I don't know how I can get into it, but I'm just gonna keep doing it. So I like would like create like reels for myself and like try to like find things to be in. And then my school, we had like a, a whole like, uh, visual and design like visual multimedia major so they were creating games and i was the voice actor for them and then um i just happened to think like well you know the pandemic's happening i was supposed to move to new york and then uh we had a showcase and i got pinned by agents in los angeles so i decided hey i've never been to the west coast before why not just move during the pandemic and let's see what happens <laughs> so i moved to the west coast uh, not ever been there. I haven't even been there before. Like I just was going in completely blind. I wasn't even signed with my agents at the time. I just decided to go and just risk it all. So I did, I just risked it all. Um, because I really wanted to move to New York, but nothing was going to happen there. Um, so I went there and I moved to Burbank and that's essentially like voiceover world. It's like an amusement park, like Nickelodeon's there, Cartoon Network's there, like everything you would want. Warner Brothers is there. Everything is there. Bang, Zoom, all these places, VSI. And like at the time I was kind of still in the back of my mind, like, yeah, I want to like pursue voiceover now that I'm like here. So then I was able to like link up to, with the people at Real Voice LA because Arina Ratner uh, is a friend of mine and I found her. She graduated from NYU with a degree in acting. And I, I, what I, I really wanted to use my degree to get in the door mm -hmm. um, because a lot of people don't have that training who are trying to be a voice actor. So I was like, okay, so I'm very privileged to have this degree and I'm here. So why not see if that can get me anything? And um, I was really lucky. I've been really lucky with, uh, I made my demos and I was really lucky with getting an agent. First really professional credit that I did was I was on, uh, Roseman Pike did a podcast drama series called Edith um, yeah. by Q Code, and I got to act alongside her, and that was crazy. And it was my like my first one of my first SAG jobs, and I was like, okay. And then I like booked a video game, and then I was like um, the voice for Granger in um, Mobile Legends, Mobile Hero Legends Online, M Mobile Legends. Sorry, it's such it's so long. Mobile Legends Bang Bang Heroes, mm -hmm. something along that line. <laughs> um, and the cool thing was. Like the studio that I got that is like next to my house. So I just needed to like walk outside, go in there, do my thing and leave. And then I kind of like got out of there and like they gave me the check and like money's not important to me. It is important because you have to like survive. Um, but I didn't realize like, oh, wait, this work is like here and immediate. And I like literally it's next to my house. So I'm going to double down with this. And then. Uh, I connected with Melissa Grillo, who was uh, was a casting director at Keyword Studios, and then I started doing a lot of work with Keyword Studios for video games, like Player Knows Battlegrounds, and then other projects. And one of the projects that Melissa cast me on, and I will, I'm forever grateful for her because she completely is the one that was able to get me in the door for this job specifically. Um, I was on a project and Michael Storch was my director and I didn't know who Michael was, but of course I did because Michael's been in everything and Michael's directed all of this stuff and Michael's responsible for the creation of Yuri Lorenthal and Troy Baker, like all of these people that we all know. He's responsible for discovering them. And I was kind of going in blind and I was met with like this amazing human being. Two hours later, like we're like talking and he's liking what I'm doing, thankfully. Um, and then he just kind of was like, yeah, like you kind of have a really good voice for like anime, like young voice. You, you definitely could be like in a 
uh, a high school setting and I was like, oh, well, you know, anime, because again, anime is really hard to get into. No one really knows how to get into it. You get on rosters, you get an agent, but even if you have an agent, it's hard to get those auditions because they're using the same people over and over and over again, which you should be if they're like available and giving you work and you know they're good and it's less of a risk. So, you know, I just was like, yeah, anime, that's crazy you say that. Um, I really want to get into it. I don't know how to get into it, but I know I can do it. Um, and then he was like, oh yeah, well, okay, well, I'll help you out. I'll send you auditions whenever they come up. And I was like, oh my God, thank you so much. Like, thank you. Oh my God. Uh, an audition for anime at that point in my life, which was only like four months ago. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to get an audition for anime. I was like so excited. <laughs> So my day job at the time was doing Instacart uh, as my survival job as a, a, a starving actor in California. And I was I was out there delivering, um, I don't know, I was like in Sprouts, in, which is a supermarket chain. And I was, I was just like, you know, doing my job. And then I noticed it like on my, my, uh, my website, I can see who and where people are and how long they're staying on my website for. And there was like, like all of these hits from like Burbank and then other like, you know, voiceover world, like towns and cities in California. I was like, what's going on? And then I like looked at the thing and it said that this one person had been on my website for like 40 minutes. So then as I'm working, I get a call from my agent being like, hey, this just came in. And I was like, what? And she was like, yeah, uh, they want, it's this, at the time, the project code word was Hush. It was like, Hush season one wants to book you for their series for Netflix. And I was like, what? And then I, I kind of like had this moment where I was like, the world got, I, like I saw, I was an out of body experience. And I kind of was just like, oh my God. And then I like, was like, who sent it to you? And then she was like, Michael, this person named Michael Sorge. And I'm like, oh my God, what? And then, and then I was like, Michael, thank you so much. Like, what is this? And he was like, oh, you know, it's, it's, uh, I'm, you need, you want to do anime. So here you go. He gave me two parts, uh, Mono Shinobi, Mono Shinobi Mono and she, uh, two characters that I play on Komi Can't Communicate. And at the time, I really don't know what it was because he didn't, couldn't tell me what Komi, he didn't say that. He just said, hush. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what is that? And then I kind of was able to discern that it was Komi Can't Communicate based on the names of the characters. And I was like, wait, what? This is like a huge manga. Like, this is a, like a big deal. And the anime is coming out. What? And like, I totally flipped out in the, in the supermarket. I like started screaming. <laughs> I was like, people were like, what is going on? And I'm like, I booked a Netflix show. I booked a Netflix. Like, it was so strange because I didn't audition for this. And I was like, this is a big deal. Like, this is a big deal. And I'm still really excited about it. Um, and I was like, oh my God. So then I'm, you know, excited to do it. And like, I'm like so nervous because again, I don't know. I've never done it before. Like I never, well, I've done, I've done um, dubbing before, but for uh, not anime, but for Western animation and uh, other kinds of stuff. But I didn't really know how it works because they don't tell you how anime dubbing works. Like the, you just like, do you get the script beforehand? Do you get the script on the day? Like, what is it like matching the lip flaps? What is that? There's like a whole codex of like terms you need to know, like, um closed mouth open mouth all this stuff and thankfully because i you know took i audited like anime classes like with kira buckland who's in the show mm -hmm. that i audited i literally audited a workshop i didn't even pay, i like paid uh, like four dollars to sit and watch other people take the class and i like watched that like two months prior so i got all the information and then i now am in an anime with kira like what is going on and the funny thing is Amber Lee Connors, who plays Comey, she was my director for one of those jobs at Keywords. So mm. I already knew who Amber was and she knew who I was because she directed me. And I was like, because again, I didn't know who the cast was until I got into the space and was like, okay, who who is on this show? Because it's a big show and I need to know who it is. And they're like, Amber Lee Connors. And it's like, are you joking? Like, I know who this person is. And I, I like freaked out. And, uh, yeah, and then I, like, I went in there, and, 
VSI is like an amazing place. They are un they're incredible. Their engineers are so good. Like the it's so well organized. And uh, I just essentially like for I think it was like an hour. They had me they had me in for like three three times total, one for an hour, and then the next time for two hours, and then for fifteen minutes for pickups. Um, so it was a really quick process in recording the show. But because the sub of Comey Can't Communicate came out before I went in, I watched the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And like, I was like so focused on like listening to the performance of the sub, which is fantastic. You should definitely listen to both. The sub is fantastic. It's really great. And I was able to get a lot of context. So when I went into the room, I knew exactly what I needed to do. Because that's a huge thing for me in order for like my process to work is I need to go in knowing that all I need to uh, worry about is to play as opposed to um, be concerned about like what is going on in the scene because it really is fast. Like we were like going in and essentially was karaoke where you have like the screen with the characters and then at the bottom of the screen, there's the lines and then a, the, they beep you in and then there's a bar and then when it hits the bar, you talk. And that, I was like, oh, I'm ready to go. So like every time I was in there, I was just having a grand old time. And then amazing things started happening where M Michael just started giving me more characters to play. Mm -hmm. So so then I was only slated to do two, which I was so happy for because Mono is a recurring character and she's really funny, but Mono is a recurring character in the series. He's part of the gang. He's part of like Comey's friend group. And I was completely fine with that. I was like, that's it, great. But then he started giving me all of these characters that just started showing up. And he's like, no, oh, just do that. No, just do that, do that. And then I now voicing like 25 to like 20 people. And then like near the end, he was like, you know what? You know what? Um, you could also be um Comey. You could be you could be her brother. And I was like, What? Mm -hmm. You want me to be the brother? And he was like, Yeah, why not? Go for it. So then I I'm now cast as the brother as well, mm -hmm. which is huge because he's Comey's brother. And also in the future, and I, I did read, because in the manga, he does appear quite a bit uh, more. Um, and, you know, it was just like this whole process has been like kind of like a surreal un, like whirlwind of like all of these things kind of like falling into place. And essentially, I keep thinking it's like a gift, like like the universe gave me a gift. And like, I'm sure as hell not gonna like mess it up. That was like the thing, like I'm not messing this up because so many people want this. So many people deserve it um, that have been working to be a voice actor for so long um, and haven't been finding the success. But um, I'm just so grateful that I could stand next to these amazing, talented actors that are like, like have been in so many projects that I looked at, you know, growing up and now I get to be with them, and it's in a space that I was never really familiar with until really recently. And I'm, I'm really happy with um, the response of the English dub so far. Yeah, I'm just really grateful. And to anyone who's looking to get into voiceover, who isn't like finding success in it, or like you feel like you're stuck, and people have already reached out to me being like, "Congrats, but like I'm stuck. Like, what do I do?" I would say, you know, keep going, um, because the more the more you put yourself out there, the more people will know you. And this, my circumstance was all based on the work that I had done in front of people. And then those people talking to other people. Um, so just know whenever you're in a space where people are watching or listening to your work, they're taking note of it. And then out of nowhere, you might actually get an email saying like, hey, we want you to audition for an anime, or they just might give it to you, or a video game, or a film. It's all about making a good impression and all about, you know, the willingness to work and for them to know that. Because it's it's one thing to want something, but it's another thing to actually do it. Mm -hmm. um, that was a lot, but that was my journey. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's funny because I, yeah, um, Michael Sorich was my last interview of 2021 and he actually brought your name up and I thought that he was talking about um, Jack Dylan, like the kid that was an it because he, oh. didn't, he didn't clarify. So. Yeah, Jack Dylan Grazer. Yeah, yeah. we share a name. <laughs> we're not, we're, we share a name, but we're not the same, but I'd like to meet him one day. Yeah. Um, that's so funny. Wow, of course he did. He's he's incredible. He's so, he's so amazing. Um, he's just like such a funny 
person and he's so smart. And as a director, there only, there's like, I'm really used to, um, I can take direction fairly well. It's a skill that I know that I have. Um, however, he makes it so easy mm. and it is very evident in the dub that he knows exactly what he wants and he's able to get the actor to get there. Um, and that's why the dub is so good. And that's why everything that he touches is great. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, he's so good. I love him. I can't wait to work with him again at some point. And it is interesting because, uh, I mean, even though Shosuke is really quiet, like her brother, he's he has a really big uh, following. Yeah, that's the thing. Because I was like, he was giving me the part and I was like, oh my God. And then in the back of my mind, I was like, oh my God, like so many people love this character and I already have seen like the memes and like the fan art, like it's just a big deal. <laughs> um, but I quietly was just like, sure, yeah, I'll do it. But inside I was like, I was like vibrating. I was like, okay, let's not mess this up. <laughs> but I'm, 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 um, I'm happy with, I'm happy with what happened mm -hmm. and hope people like it. What do you think you could, uh, relate more to him or uh, Mono? The thing about Mono is when I first was looking at that character, I was kind of thinking of like, he would have a voice like show where it would be kind of like downplayed and kind of monotone because he's like a ninja and that was my, where my instinct went. But then, you know, as it was happening, I was like, wait, I think the cool thing would be to play the antithesis of that and that he's really loud. <laughs> he's like really like rambunctious. Um, and then Michael was really like encouraging me to go that direction. Um, as a person, uh, I think I relate to them both because as a person, I'm like really like loud, like Mono and I like being big, but also like when I'm walking down the street, as I've been told by other people, I come across as intimidating. People who don't know me might think that, might see me from afar, might think I'm like him, but I think deep down I'm like Mono and like she, I, I don't know, she, I, I don't, I don't see myself as like a henchman. But I'm definitely like a hype man when it comes to my friends, and that's exactly what he is in that moment <laughs> with, with the uh, his friend and his friend confronting Najimi. Um, but yeah, I definitely I'm a bo I'm both of those people in one. Well, because I mean, yeah, the whole thing with Shosuke is that he's not actually quiet. He just doesn't want to talk to people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, he's just so over it all. Um, I think their whole family is so interesting. I think Gen Z specifically is going to really relate to this because as Gen Z as well, I think I think we all kind of have had this collective like social anxiety and like depression. Like I think we all are living in this world of like COVID and like uncertainty and like, and I think this speaks to like, there's hope. And when you surround yourself with good people, good things happen. Um, and like the family dynamic is really interesting because like the mother is so, like out there and the father the son and the daughter are all kind of the same way the same plane it's just i i love the family name i think it's so smart um and who knows maybe show will open up later <laughs> maybe we'll see more of his what's actually going underneath the surface because i know there's a lot there and he really does care about his sister and his family i think um even though he's like cool like the whole scene like he goes to like the maid thing he he shows up to support Comey. Like he wouldn't have shown up if he didn't like his sister. And maybe he was forced to go there by his mother. But like I like to think that maybe he showed up for his sister and kind of is helping her um with that. Uh and yeah, I don't know. I, there's a lot of like I noticed there's a lot of fan art between like him and Tadano, which is like so <laughs> funny to me that they're like friends and that like he's really protective of Comey though. So like Tato knows there, but he's but in between them is him is show, mm -hmm. um, and I think I relate to that aspect, and that I'm very protective of my friends, and like I want to make sure I what's like I know what's good for them. So yeah, I I also relate to show in that regard. And since in the in the anime so far that um, show only has one line, um, was that just kind of a quick thing that Michael? Did or was it no different? there's there's actually there's there's three there's okay. there's um there's like a mumble there's like a line and then there's another line 
Um, that was in the script. That was in the sub. Um, we didn't add anything. I think it was very, very specific. Uh, cause like Mono talks a lot and like the other characters that I voice talk a lot, but like show, I think it was, it was really specific to the author and the creator that he can't talk a lot. He has to be really reserved like Komi cause Komi really doesn't talk either. But the fact that show only has like three, like audible lines, I think it's able to like set, it makes, it makes him interesting. Because it makes the audience be like, so we know what's going on with Comey, but what's going on with him? And like, I think it opens up the possibility to explore that later in another season as it's explained more in the manga down the line. And can you talk about a, if it was, a, it's probably obvious, but if there was a more um, difficulty to bring acting to that opposed to playing Mono? Uh, you know... No, <laughs> because I think, I think I understood it. Show kind of ar fit like an archetype that I already had in my brain. So like it was really easy to kind of just like disconnect from everyone else and just focus on him. Knowing how as a character he's so reserved, I needed to make sure that would be clear, but also like not boring. So like in the three things that I do say, it can't be boring and it can't be like high energy. So it has to be somewhere in the middle um, where there's still life to what he's saying. Mm -hmm. And with all the other um, incidental characters that you voiced in it as well, um, was there a case where you had to alter your voice really significantly? They were all different. They're all, it's interesting. They're all me, but they're all, they're all like different tones. So I work in like making, when I make a decision on a character's uh, voice, I'm, I know that I'm placing them in different tones in my range so that I know, because I'm a singer as well. And Michael also pointed out when we were recording, he's like, you must be a singer because I would have to, I would be, my tones would be different and I would be able to sustain them for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I think there was, there's two, there are two instances where I think I forgot the character Sean Chiplock voices, but Sean and I's voice are very similar. Mm -hmm. I've gone up for things that Sean has gone up for. I've also gone up for like things that Sean had to leave. And then I was, I auditioned to replace him. Um, and our voices are, very similar so there are i forgot where but there are three instances where i think it's sean i think i voice him because he was like listen to the voice mimic it and then i did mm -hmm. um for like pickups that he couldn't make but as in terms of like difficulty with specific like other incidentals i think there was uh maybe one i don't you see there was one i think of the um Someone like jump is gonna jump off, not jumping off. They're like confessing at the top of like the school. I'm one of the people that confesses. Um, and it was like, and I'm also all the people in the crowd talking. of uh, being like, wow, that was like cool. Like it was weird. I was like essentially talking to myself. So like I, my character's confessing something up there that had to be completely different from the other from the people reacting to that. Um, and I had to like I had to like put gravel in my voice. I had to like smooth out my voice or some. I needed to bring it like really high and then also really low. And then when they played it all together, it sounded like all these different kinds of people, which I was like, hmm, not bad, Jack. You did it. Um, but like at watching, like this is hilarious because it's just me talking this entire sequence. Um, but it's it's cool. But that's what happens, and that's why people shouldn't look over Walla because a lot of artists who do Walla, that's their first thing they do. I was lucky I had named characters to do, but people do Walla, and it's really difficult because you have to be able to change your voice and make each character different so it's believable in the final recording. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Having talked to a lot of other people that I know in in um, anime dubbing, it's not it's more rare to like perform against yourself at least with character parts yeah yeah that was something that was i was excited that i was able to do it mm -hmm. and i was excited that i i'm happy that i did it well hopefully um but it seemed like i have um but yeah it just makes me excited to do more <laughs> if anything <laughs> because the process was just so fun and um yeah it's just really fun and i know of course like all that uh, everybody else recorded by themselves but have you had any uh, interaction with the other cast members so far 
I did say hello to Skylar Davenport. However, she didn't, she probably had no idea. Again, because these people had no idea who I was, because all these people are established voice actors who know each other. And I'm like the only person on the cast list that no one knows. Um, so I like, I left at my pickup session. And as I was walking out, I saw Skylar like sitting, waiting. And I kind of knew who it was, but I played dumb. And I was like, hi, um, what's your name? And she's like, I'm Skylar. And I'm like, oh, hi, Skylar. Um, I'm Jack Dylan. Nice to meet you. I'm very excited to hear your performance in this show. She has no idea who you are. And then I like walked, I left, um, but she's the only one. Oh, but I do talk to Amber a lot. Amber, because I worked with her before, when I, I figured out it was her, there was a point where the, ca the IMDb like said who the cast was. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't released yet. Like the dub wasn't released yet. And I was like, what's happening? How do they know this? And then there was a leak, apparently. There's a leak of like a preview, like of the English dub that was on Reddit. Yeah. And my friend sent that to me and they were like, you're in this? And I'm like, how did you get that? What is that? And I was like really scared because I'm like, oh my God, I can't say, this is really scary. I can't say anything. And um, I was like, so I was like freaking out. I'm like, who who leaked that? Who was that? Um, but then I figured out it was Amber. And then I like, messaged her very cryptically on twitter being like hey amber wait i'll read it to you because i think it's <laughs> really funny hi amber i have a question about the protocol for announcing roles for bigger projects by bigger companies that you don't want to make angry so when let's say one day you see that an imdb page has an update with all of the american dub actors for a project like as a very recent dot 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 it's still unofficial yes one waits for big corporation to announce first i'm guessing and she's like, hey, Jack, yes, dash. Sadly, you'll still need to wait for either the project to fully come out in English or wait for a bit corporate um, announcement, a big corporate announcement, regardless of the IMDb page or other credit posting laughing emoji. And I'm like, okay, she gets it. She gets it. She, know, she knows what the context is. But I was like, I, I don't know what's happening. But um, yeah, Amber, um, but other than those two people, no, no. I would like to talk to more. I mean, I have seen Kira before, but I don't think Kira knows who I am. Hopefully after this, they all do. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, those two people. Mm -hmm. If Skylar is watching this, I'm sorry if I if I scared you. I was just very excited to see you. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know you touched on it a little bit earlier, but um, a lot of people in the sub were wondering if you with other characters in the series and the manga, if you um, like imagined yourself as any playing anybody else. There's this one character that I don't, I don't, it was, it was nameless, but it was like this character with like curly hair that looked just like me. That was part of like the, the Comey protection security squad that Mono has, <laughs> um, that I want to, that I voice in this, this, but I want to experience, I, he, I feel like he has more to offer. He doesn't have a name, um, but there's like, I was like, there's more to him and I want to ex explore more of that. But honestly, I'm happy with the characters that I have. Again, if I'm given any, I'll, I will definitely make sure that I know the context of who they are and like what's going to happen. Because again, that's a big thing for me. Strangely, also, I love Tarano so much. I think he's an amazing character and our actor does such an amazing job. It's just, it's so strange though, because my... I showed my parents this and they're like, you're the lead character? And I'm like, no, that isn't me. I just sound like him. He's a great character. But again, any character in the future, I'm happy to have um, if they if they send it my way. Mm -hmm. Well, the second season actually comes out in Japan in April. I know. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm very excited to see what else um, is in store. And there are things that I can't say. Uh, I'm very, being very cryptic because I can't say anything. <laughs> um, but it's very nice of them to to wonder that. So is there anything else that's um, upcoming, I guess, that you're part of that you can talk about? or I'm part of two projects that are video games. That they were just like, the thing about voiceover is that you sign all these NDAs, right? And you can't, AJ Beckles is great. I, creating hype. I respect, I love AJ. Um, he's actually one of the reasons why um, I was like, I'm going to do this because like AJ was 
23 at the time i was 22 and aj started like really like on twitter being very vocal about like wanting to get into it and then he did it and manifested it and then got it and then has like tamagichi and like is on a net, lead of the netflix show and it's amazing and he's incredible incredible he's like a rising star i can't wait to see that career explode um but you know he's great at creating uh hype around his ndas because he's on so much so he like does these like eye circles these mm -hmm. like eye emojis to say that like something's coming um that to me is very bold and i'm very afraid of doing that because i'm like i'm like an overthinker so i'm like they're gonna read through what that means the people are gonna know that i'm like thinking about that project when in reality it's just like eye emojis no one knows what that is <laughs> but um but yeah there's a couple projects coming up that i'm really excited for um and again i'm very fortunate that voiceover to my my path because everyone is different uh i i'm on a bunch of rosters and i get auditions to do from the rosters and i get auditions from my agent and it's so competitive and you don't know when you're gonna get it but most of the roles that i book are off of people that i've worked with before or they come out of nowhere so i'm kind of navigating I'm essentially a creative minefield where if i'm walking down the street i might step on a job that then gives me an opportunity but other times i might not step on that landmine and then keep walking so it's kind of like uh i think every voice actor and every actor um kind of goes through this period of like there are highs and there are lows i'm on a high period right now but at any time that can just stop um, but I'm very excited and very happy and very lucky to be, you know, doing well right now. Ryan Colt Levy is also a huge inspiration of mine. And he talks about uh, a lot about how, like, he's doing really well, but at any moment, you know, something could happen where it's over for a bit. But then it comes back. Um, that's why I am I just want to bring it back to, like, people who are really interested in, like, being an actor, just in general, like, it's just really hard like it's just it's hard but the, what it's really exciting because the the work um the work is really rewarding when you get it but also the journey the journey is really important mm -hmm. and really exciting because never in my wildest dreams would i imagine that i move i, I graduate school i move to a place i've never been before i get signed with an agent i then start booking then i get signed with another agent and then another agent and then i'm doing voiceover professionally and i'm on a netflix show playing multiple characters with these incredible actors like that was a span of essentially like a year and a half mm -hmm. and that was crazy but everything leading up to that kind of informed that so just keep going because the last thing i would want to hear is that like someone really going and then being upset and that just sign it's not for me but usually when people say it's not for me the next moment probably is theirs so just keep going mm -hmm. well thanks for uh willing to do this hey no problem thank you so much for having me um it was it's it's a great dub it's a great anime it's a great manga and you know having having had social anxiety and being unfortunately in my childhood <laughs> bullied and all of this stuff um this anime is just a reminder that it gets better mm -hmm. and that when you surround yourself with a group of people that really care about you and only all they want to do is lift you up rather than put you down you, you can figure out who you are and find yourself and hopefully that anime this anime brings um hope to people that, that are that feel a little alone because you're never alone. But uh, thank you again for having me. Um, this was a lot of fun, Chris. Yeah, I'll be sure, of course, to send it to you once I have it up. My website is jackdillonvio.com. I'm just going to shamelessly plug myself. Um, and jack underscore 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 Dylan is my Twitter handle. handle. Um, and if you just have any questions at all about voiceover or the industry, just like feel free to like reach out to me. Um, I have classes available on my my website um where if you have an audition we can go through it and i could give you my advice um and kind of like help you navigate it but again like really any any anything you need to, you would like to ask someone who's working in this industry just let me know and i'll definitely help you out
Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks. All right. No problem. Have a great, it's the afternoon. Yes. Have a great afternoon, Chris. Yeah, <laughs> All right. Bye-bye.